So now it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Giovanni Veselesi, in which we spend uh, a lot of our uh, childhood together, <laughs> from PhD on over, uh, we, we have been working together to the same labs. Now Giovanni is at the University of Modern and Reggio Emilia. He's also very, he has also important appointment like vice rector at that university and also on the, the, the ministry of uh, our uh, institution, instruction uh, in Italy give him another important duty, a CHIPS Act. So it is within the group that will uh, develop uh, the CHIP Acts in, in Italy. So he's also in a, in a very important position. So please uh, represent us very well. Okay, Giovanni. Okay, Giovanni, and okay. we are looking forward to listen to you. Okay. Okay, thank you, Gaudenzio. I'm very happy that you mentioned uh, this because this is a good excuse not to be completely focused on uh, on uh, on, on uh, gallium nitride hand. So you will excuse me if I'm not uh, very good in uh, in this presentation. So uh, first of all, a disclaimer: this is not going to be a comprehensive re review and uh, also no tutorial, okay, um, in spite of the title. Uh, rather is a selection of cases where basically we were able by means of device simulation to get some, to add some physical uh, insight uh, on top of the, of, the, of the conclusion drawn directly um, on the base of the measurements, okay? So, uh, all our device simulation have been carried out with the Synopsys as device uh, simulator, drip diffusion and, and or hydrodynamic transport were, were used. And basically the two mandatory ingredients that, that have to be, to, be, to be put into the, the, the simulation deck in order to be able to reproduce and simulate gallium nitride devices are of course spontaneous and piezoelectric polarization model. And uh, we also uh, basically limit ourselves to, to model um, trapping effects that could be explained in terms of shock door dynamic trap model. So it is good for standard, um, standard point defects as Clemens um, clearly explained uh, in the previous talk. And most of the results I'm going to show uh, uh, obey this simple scheme. Um, University of Modern Reggio Emilia for simulation, University of Padova for measurement, company for, for the devices. Okay? And so I, I have to acknowledge uh, the contribution of many people Basically, all the authors of the papers I, 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 mm, I, I, I will use, I mean, to present some results, uh, all their affiliating institutions, all the funding projects, and this information have to be found in the, in the cited papers. So basically, I will, uh, the, the selection of uh, case studies, um, will address, will allow us to address trapping effects, degradation mechanism, breakdown effects. Brief introduction, just a couple of slides, just to, to put into evidence the, the rapid growth of gallium nitride uh, markets, both the power uh, gallium nitride market, okay, you can find the, the number here, and also the RF, RF gallium nitride market. Okay. Uh, just a slide to, 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 to focus on what matters for switching converters. So in switching converters, uh, transistors are used as uh, switch, uh, switches. And mm, the this, this switch has to, to state, the on state and the off state, what matters in the on state is to have the lowest um, equivalent resistance, the R on, uh, uh, as possible. Uh, what matters in the, for the off state is to have the highest blocking voltage um, uh, as possible. And uh, unfortunately, there is a trade-off between these two parameters and, uh, oh, sorry. 
and this trade-off is basically described for, for all of the semiconductors of interest here and gallium nitride can theoretically provide free order of magnitudes increase in, in I mean, uh, in, in, I mean, decrease in our own, our own resistance for any breakdown voltage compared to silicon. As a matter of fact, state of the art devices are kind of in between, between, I mean, between the, the silicon behavior and the uh, ultimate theoretical gun behavior. So uh, technology hasn't reached uh, the theoretical gun limit um, so far. And for more details, for more details, I mean, if you if you want to pr to probe further, I suggest you to 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 listen to to this video. Uh, former President Obama explaining the importance of gallium nitride for the future of the American economy. Very nice talk. Very nice. Uh, uh, what about RF amplifiers? So, power, the RF output power is basically proportional to the product of the two, I mean, voltage and, and current swing. So, the current swing is from zero to I max. The voltage swing is from the maximum, uh, the breakdown voltage and the so-called knee voltage. Okay, and so to, to improve power, you have to increase IMAX and you have to reduce, you have to increase the breakdown voltage and you have to, to keep this number low. Unfortunately, trapping effects tend to increase dynamically the, the, the knee voltage. Okay, oh, sorry, I forget to, to mention, but trapping effects have a, a, a detrimental detrimental impact on the around okay trapping effects will decrease dynamically will increase sorry will increase will degrade uh, the dynamic around okay and similarly trapping effects here in RF amplifier will tend to decrease the IMAX current collapse the so-called current collapse effect and increase the knee voltage and be both effects are detrimental okay and also efficiency depends on the knee voltage so the so-called knee voltage workout induced by trapping effects is detrimental at the same time for power and for efficiency Okay, so trapping effects. Some other basics. Okay. Um, I will skip this because Clemens uh, was very good in explaining also these concepts. And just a brief comment, a brief comment on this. Uh, trapping effects need, of course, traps and needs also a charging mechanism. A charging mechanism. Okay. So in this paper, you can find it, our our attempt for a classification of all the possible trapping mechanisms based on these two concepts: the trap location and the charging mechanism. A kind of zoology of of traffic effects in gallium nitride devices. First case, barrier versus buffer trap. In this work, basically, I mean, devices here were RF amps, Schottky gate, silicon carbide substrate, gallium nitride buffer doped with iron and single or dual field plate. To, I mean, to reduce the surface trap effects. And in, in measurement here, we're able to identify four trapping signatures. And simulation, we're able to kind of 
quantitatively reproduce experimental results if one trap was attributed to buffer and the other three traps were attributed to ba barrier as location. Okay? And simulation were also able to reproduce the fact that is shown here experimentally that barrier trap, at least one of the barrier trap, produces upward or downward transient depending on the final gate bias. So, some insight. Buffer traps, basically, according to simulations, buffer traps are fed. So the charging mechanism is buffer punch through current. So source drain punch through current through the buffer. Okay, during the off state, electrons are trapped into the iron related defects in the buffer. Okay, and during as the devices turn on, these traps emit electrons. Barrier traps, instead, are fed by gate-injected electrons. So the charging mechanism is the gate electron leakage current. And this happens in off state. And during turn on, okay, we have two possible competing mechanisms. We can have electron emission simply because now, now the gate lateral injection is removed, is, is suppressed, so traps tend to emit electrons. Or we can also have electron capture, mainly localized at the source side of a barrier, owing to the reduction of depletion region. Okay? When you remove the negative gate bias, you suppress the leakage current from the gate, but you also tend to, um, to have an increase of electron concentration at the source side. So depending on, the, on, on, on what of these two effects dominate, you can have electron emission or electron capture uh, from or into uh, barrier traps. And also another, another piece of information gained from simulation was that actually this transient that is related to T1 trap, that is iron, iron, so iron trap in the buffer can be upward or downward according to simulation. In the real devices is, is this kind upward, so you must have basically electron emission, but you can in principle also have electron capture into T1 if the iron doping is not switched off at a sufficient distance from the channel, from the channel, okay? So there are devices actually that have, that exhibit this behavior and simulation is able actually to explain both types of transients related to, to the buffer, to the buffer trap. C doping. I'm very happy uh, that I, I mean my results are in very good agreement <laughs> with, with Clemens one. So we are not going to I mean to assist a I mean a, a <laughs> A controversy. Um, so, C doping, C doping is, a, of course, as Clemens already already said, is adopted in buffer layer of power gun hands in order to compensate an intentional n-type conductivity and therefore to reduce source drain leakage current and increase the breakdown voltage. And compared to iron doping, carbon doping allows for a more abrupt profiles and better breakdown versus dynamic around trade-off. And carbon can be incorporated in two ways by auto-doping and extrinsic doping. Okay. Okay. Basically during our experience, 
we try to simulate carbon doping effects by using three different models. The auto compensation, sorry, the auto compensation model, and specifically the one originally proposed by by Lyon, the Lyon's paper, with the CN acceptor very close to EV, okay, and the CGA, so carbon substituting for gallium, very close to EC, okay, and this is model A for us. Model B, just the CN defect, so the acceptor uh, trap associated to carbon, carbon substituting for nitrogen at 0.9. Okay, it is 0.9 here has to be considered the 0.7 of Clemens' presentation, the same trap. Okay, just a sector, all the carbon incorporated as a sector, and then the dominant acceptor model, model C. Okay, and okay, uh, as you can see here, we found that the drain to source capacitance roll off voltage at increasing drain source voltage was a sensitive function of a carbon doping model and these are infinium devices actually taken from from okay i forgot to to put the paper here oh no here this paper and 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 Okay, and model A results in a negligible current collapse and dynamic around increase. Actually, in some devices, we were able to reproduce experimental results using model A because those devices had no, basically, no appreciable carbon related trapping signature. Okay, but it was probably a case. I mean, uh, it was basically a misinterpretation on experimental results that lead to that led to an error in the simulation model. Now, according to our uh, actual present understanding, I mean, we are in complete agreement with Clemens' present Clemens' conclusion. It is model C the dominant acceptor model that is probably the model that is able to explain the majority of experimental results in gallium nitride hands. Okay, I will skip this because it has already been treated by Clemens' presentation. So just there must be there must be donors introduced by carbon. It can be the CGA defect or, or there are a variety of complexes acting as donors or also uh, interstitial carbon uh, can be the donor, the donor traps introduced by carbon. Here is a confirmation of the fact that there must be a compensation ratio of about 50% in order to explain the experimental evidence. Uh, basically, we arrived to this conclusion, extrinsic carbon cannot simply be incorporated as the acceptor CN, as in this case, current collapse and dynamic are on effects would make the device completely non-functional if a nominal carbon doping is assumed. Okay, And basically current collapse remains very small regardless of the donor acceptor compensation rate. <coughs> Sorry, ratio. Only if the carbon doping density is assumed to be very small. And for higher uh, carbon doping, unless the compensation ratio is very large, 
current collapse increases steeply, reaching a value that are values that are well above those reported for state-of-the-art power ends. On the other hand, if you consider breakdown, okay, we found that there is a correlation between the total, the total carbon concentration and breakdown. As far as current collapse and dynamic around degradation effects are concerned, there is a, there is a correlation between I mean, between these effects and the net acceptor concentration. On the other hand, as far as breakdown is concerned, the maximum breakdown achievable by, by, by the device is concerned, there is a correlation between this parameter and the total, so the sum of acceptors and donors. So. The breakdown increase at increasing the total carbon concentration, okay, as a result of a decrease on the electric field peak and the gate edge. And then there is a saturation for all the possible compensation ratio. There is a saturation in the breakdown voltage. And this is due to the fact that at some point the electric field peak moves from the gate edge to the drain edge. Okay, and, and then we have, as far as the saturation value for the breakdown voltage is concerned, there is a non-monotonic dependence on the compensation ratio. And this is because charge donors contribute to make the electric field more young for once after the electric field peak has moved to the drain. And so the conclusion is without significant carbon incorporation, also as a donor, experimental breakdown voltage, the experimental value from the, from, from the devices we were considering in this work is here. Okay. The experimental breakdown cannot be justified by our simulation unless, unless there is a compensation ratio in the order of 50%. 50%. Okay, whole redistribution model. So now we are going to address current collapse and dynamic around degradation related to carbon doping. And we have for these effects an explanation that we call whole redistribution model. I will skip the first two episodes of this series and I will go, I mean, to the last paper where we, we published what we believe is the final explanation for, for this effect. I mean, final explanation except for a list of limitations, okay? In these devices, fabricated by IMEC, Gaudenzio and, and his co-workers were able to, I mean, measure basically the r on degradation increase and recovery kinetics Okay, at different temperatures. Okay, and found these nice behaviors. Okay, and we try to we try to answer this question: Is it possible to provide an explanation for these experimental results? A simple explanation, just based on putting carbon doping into the device, the simulated device, using the, uh, I mean, the uh, dominant acceptor model, okay? And nothing else, and nothing else. 
So we are not assuming nothing else than the simple trap dynamics associated with the dominant acceptor related to carbon in the buffer, in the buffer. And these are the simulation results to compare with the experimental one, okay? And sorry, okay, experiments were twofold. These are experiments and corresponding simulations obtained by means of front gate stress and recovery. Okay, and these are the stress conditions, minus eight of v VGS, 25 volt of VDS, and zero voltage applied to the, to the bulk, to the substrate, and recovery, I mean, on state condition, just to measure the around at different stress times. And then, same conditions to monitor the recovery transient, the recovery transient. And here we have experiments obtained by stressing the device in a different way, stressing the device by the back gate. Okay, and these are the stressing conditions, zero at the, at the gate, zero at the drain, and minus, minus 25 volt to the back side. Very similar kinetics of our, our own, for our own, and quite interesting agreement obtained with simulations, also in this case. Another point, interesting point from measurement is that, okay, of course, similar kinetics, similar kinetics for the two type of experiments pointing to buffer traps as the traps responsible. And second point, both stress and recovery and recovery transients were found to be thermally activated first, second, with the same activation energy. So two coincidences. <laughs> and this is not trivial. This is not trivial. And third coincidence, the activation energy extracted are in, I mean, very well in agreement with the energy typically, typically um, predicted and found for the CN, CN trap related to acceptors, acceptors um, for carbon. And, and also simulations adopting the partial donor acceptor compensation or dominant acceptor compensation model were able to reproduce the experimental behavior. Also, in terms of activation energy extracted from the simulations at the different temperatures. Okay? So, explanation. It is the same for back gate stress and recovery and, and uh, front gate. This slide refers to back gate only. Okay? Basically, during stress, Holes, I mean, CN behaves as a hole trap. This is the prerequisite. It is uh, closer to the valence band than to the conduction band. It is at 0.7 to 0.9 EV from the valence band. So it is an hole trap. And during stress, holes simply are emitted from CN traps into the top region of a buffer that tends to be depleted. Uh, so as far as the depletion region in the top region of a buffer evolves, holes are emitted inside the depletion region that is developing and drift to the bottom of a buffer where they can be trapped by the same acceptor traps. So during stress, you have emission of holes in the top region of a buffer, 
and trapping of holes in the bottom region. And during recovery, you have, ex you have exactly the opposite processes. So during recovery, holes are emitted from traps in the bottom region of a buffer, drift to the top region of a buffer, and get trapped in the same traps. So both processes involve hole emission, hole emission. In both, in both processes, there is hole emission, and hole emission is activated thermally by the trap energy itself, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Also, the recovery transient that shouldn't be thermally activated, but should be, I mean, within the framework of the model, should be related to trapping that is not thermally activated, okay, for a standard point effect trap, but also this process needs whole emission, whole emission. Before being trapped, holes need to be emitted in another part of the device. So the bottleneck in terms of uh, times and uh, energy activation and, and, thermal, and, and thermal activation is in both processes the whole emission process. Okay. Are there limitations? Yes, yes, and we found them both experimentally and in our simulation. There are limitations to this simple picture. When electrons are injected into the buffer, this model is not able to explain experiments anymore. And electrons can come from the source due to source to drain punch through at very high VDS. Okay? Electrons can come from the back side if you approach the vertical breakdown voltage. So you have electrons injection from the back side. Okay? And if you are exploring semi-on or on conditions, electrons can also come from the channel. Channel of electrons in, the, in those conditions, semi-on or on condition, can be injected into the buffer. And when electrons are injected into the buffer, the whole redistribution model stop being able to explain experiments. And we see also very interesting effects, whole electron recombination. So the number of the total number of holes in the buffer, in the floating buffer, decreases, and there are semi-permanent degradation effects related to this whole electron recombination. And also holes can be emitted from the device, can exit the device at very high negative gate bias. They can exit the device, I mean in case of shot key gate device, can exit from the device from the gate. And in insulated gate devices, holes can be emitted from the buffer, be attracted to the gate where they can recombinate with electron leakage current through the gate dielectric. Okay. Anyway, I will skip this. Just a few, a very brief comment. The whole distribution model is also able to explain something that is typically observed. If you, if you, if you do dynamic around characterization at different VDS stress voltages, you get a degradation, an increase in the around, but at some time, many device technology show a kind of non-monotonic, non-monotonic behavior for the around degradation. At some voltage, the around stops degrading and and exhibit a kind of partial recovery. Okay? And anyway, a very simple model 
we propose, the order distribution model, is able to account also for this if you assume that at very high VDS voltage there is inside the device some kind of whole electron rigid generation mechanism. High field electron hole per generation mechanism. And the, this behavior is associate, can be associated to hole trapping. Holes are generated somewhere in the device, in the high field region of the device, and can discharge uh, acceptors in the carbon dot buffer. Okay, degradation mechanism. I will skip this. The first case refer to RFM. And here the question was ex experimental evidence of degradation in the, I mean, in the transconductance of the considered devices. I mean, these effects are they related to an increase in the, in the trap density or an increase in the trapping rate? Okay, anyway, <coughs> the interested reader can, can basically go, okay, there's no paper here, so <laughs> you, you just have these results. Basically, those are unpublished results. Now, another case of study, hot electron trapping in RF hands. Okay, here the experimental, first of all, the experimental evidence. Here, devices are shot key gate hands, 0.15 micron gate length, iron doped, or carbon dope. In RF hand, generally iron is used as doping for the buffer, but here in these devices, uh, they decided to try to use carbon in place of iron and compare the, I mean, the reliability and robustness of the two technologies. And Oh, sorry. Uh, of state stress results, okay. These are step stress experiments. Step stress experiments. Of state stress evolution of a transfer IV curves during stress, okay, at different VDS stress voltages in a step stress experiment, okay, for iron doped and carbon doped devices, all the other geometrical details of the devices, so same processing, different epitaxy. And very little degradation for the iron doped devices, strong degradation at IVGS. So, drop in the GM for the carbon doped devices. On state stress, on state stress for iron doped and carbon doped devices, again, small degradation. This last curve referred to, I mean, to just the condition just before the failure the complete failure of a device, so it can be related to our concomitant effects going on. Okay. We should limit ourselves to consider these curves. I mean, small degradation, much higher degradation for the carbon dope, and the main effect is a VT shift to more positive, to less negative, to less negative values. Okay, simulation. Can simulation, were simulation able to provide some 
some piece of information on top of the experiments. Okay, first result, the different negative charge build up inside the device, depending on whether the buffer is iron doped or carbon doped. This is quite important result. For iron doped devices, the negative charge build up in the, in the buffer corresponds to electron trapping. So the negative charge stored in the buffer increases because traps are trapping electrons. Okay. On the other hand, for carbon doped buffer, the negative charge build up in the buffer corresponds to whole emission, not to electron trapping. So, the charge build up, okay, is a completely different region of a buffer. In a very limited region under the gate for the, carb for the iron dot device and for a much larger region extending through all the gate to drain, all the gate to drain uh, assess region for the carbon dot. And this is, according to our understanding, the main reason why current collapse and dynamic around effects are much larger in power devices doped with carbon than in devices doped with iron. In iron doped hand, okay, I just comment this. So the negative charge build up is localized beneath the gate. VT change with small around variation. And where electrons come from? From the source. So it is source to drain punch through current, leakage current that provide the charging mechanism for iron traps. Okay. And another point here is that this kind of trapping can be completely reabsorbed during a typical step stress experiment where after each stress step there is a recovery step if this recovery step is long enough because the emission time constant of iron is few milliseconds few milliseconds on the other hand carbon doped hand negative charge build up is localized over the entire gate to drain assessed region so there can be a significant impact on around and these these all emission effects is only partially recoverable so it can accumulate during the step stress experiment because the time constant related to all emission and whole capture is in the time of 100 to 1000 of seconds. And according to the whole redistribution model, both processes, all emission and whole uh, trapping, have basically the same kinetics, the same time constant. Okay. And then, okay, so during off-state stress, you basically, you basically have a picture where the whole distribution model is able to explain the larger degradation observed in carbon doped devices compared to iron doped devices. Another interesting insight provided by simulation is on on-state stress. Here, the channel is formed, so there is a 2DG 
under the gate connecting the source of the drain, electrons can be heated by the relativity field, so there are channel of electrons that can be injected both towards the buffer and towards the surface. Okay. At the surface, they can get trapped by interface and border traps. In the buffer, they can get trapped by the CN states. Focusing on this last effect, simulations stress that there is an important difference between this kind of trapping and the typical trapping effects in gun hands, where you tend to consider electron trap, electron trapping phenomena, electron trapping into electron traps. This is the standard case, electron trapping into electron traps. Here we have a completely different situation. We have electron trapping into a hole trap into a whole trap, okay? And this is the most important differences, the most important difference. And this kind of trapping cannot be recovered by electron detrapping because the trap level is a 2.5 EV from the conduction band. So you have electron trapping into a trap that since it is a whole trap, it cannot release an electron. It can only trap in a hole to discharge. So this kind of degradation can only be recovered by hole trapping and not by electron emission. Okay. Uh, let me check. 20, minutes. Okay, so breakdown effects. Okay, um, as a disclaimer, I have to first of all say that breakdown effects are very difficult to simulate because they are probably related to phenomena that would require models that are not typically present in commercial device simulations, device simulators. So these two case studies I'm going to describe are kind of kind of attempts to get insights into an issue that uh, it is probably beyond the simulation capability we put into, into, into practice, okay? So, lateral breakdown. Okay, just a brief tutorial <laughs> on breakdown. In gun hands, you have lateral breakdown and vertical breakdown. And it is, of course, vertical breakdown, the ultimate voltage limiting mechanism. As lateral breakdown can be avoided by simply increasing the gate to drain distance. And this is actually the way you can experimentally verify, verify if your device, okay, is limited by lateral or vertical vertical breakdown. You fabricate devices with different LGD spacing. Okay, you measure the breakdown as a function of LGD. At some point you get a saturation in the breakdown. The breakdown voltage stops depending on LGD. That point is the point where vertical breakdown has come into play. Okay, and focusing on lateral, lateral breakdown, there are conduction mechanisms that can lead to breakdown by using a, meaning operationally, 
operationally way of defining breakdown. The current reaches some level, the level that I decided not to be tolerable for my application. Okay, so we are using that definition for breakdown. That v VDS okay, can be limited by simply conduction, leakage current. Okay, and leakage can be source to drain leakage or gate to drain leakage. And then you can have more standard breakdown effects. I mean, the one that we should consider in silicon devices. <laughs> electron hole generation. Electron hole generation. Like avalanche in the high field region triggered by electron injection from the gate, or from the source, or from the backside. Okay? Or simeon or on condition also bipolar effect between avalanche and the modulation of a source to gate a potential barrier as a result of all generation, all drift to the gate and to the source and kind of debole effect. So uh, uh, modulation of the uh, electron uh, for, of a potential barrier for electron injection. So more holes generated, more electron injection, more hole generation, and so on. Bipolar regenerative effect. Okay. Uh, okay. We are not considering vertical breakdown, so I will skip this. Lateral breakdown, lateral breakdown, these are very good, very nice Infineon devices, Infineon devices. Um, actually, these are not uh, hands, they are isolation test structures, so no gate, only source and drain. Isolation in plant in the middle, basically taking the function of the gate, okay, in order to remove, taking the function of the gate bias under sub threshold condition. So the isolation in plant depletes the channel under the gate. So similar condition to the hemp under off state conditions. Okay. And here you have you have experiments and simulations in very good agreement. And simulations are very simple. Basically, nothing different than simple source to drain punch through. At some VDS, at some critical VDS, carbon doping is not able to suppress the leakage current anymore. And this basically controls the, the breakdown voltage, defined at a very demanding, very demanding Infineon style. <laughs> very demanding level, very low drain current. Okay? Very low drain current. Okay, simulations. Okay, the punch through effect. The punch through effect in these two view graphs. Okay? Uh, sorry. Okay, conduction, conducting path. Okay, mainly in the undoped, in the undoped, um, of course, mainly in the undoped channel. Carbon doping is stopped at some distance from the channel, from the, I mean, Algangan interface. Okay, basically to design a trade off between the breakdown voltage and the dynamic around. You can tolerate the dynamic around degradation. You can tolerate, okay? But at some point, at some point, the punch through current is high enough to have a current that is higher your desired maximum current at what you call breakdown. Okay? 
So the physical mechanism just punch through. Punch through. And also we are able to reproduce in good fashion also the temperature dependence, temperature dependence uh, of the punch through current. And this is the second uh, case study about breakdown. These are devices from Ferdinand Brown Institute. There are kind of strange devices, Schottky gate hands with silicon carbide substrate. And these two, in, I mean, and these two aspects uh, should point to RF devices, RF devices, okay? But carbon doped buffer and very, very long LGD, eh? like for, I mean, power, power devices, okay? And here we try to investigate, to get some insight about a different level current, okay? We try to investigate the high current regime after breakdown. So we try to answer this question. Okay, let's assume that at some point, at some point, some electronal generation mechanism come into play, okay? In our case, we we, we try this, the, the, I mean, the simplest, the simplest answer. Impationization, impationization, okay? Is there an explanation? Is there a possible explanation why measurement provide this kind of breakdown voltage defined here, probably in the avalanche regime, probably, okay? So VBR voltage as a function of LGD, you get this curve, at some LGD you have a vertical breakdown, okay, but the slope shouldn't, the slope of this curve provide the critical electric field for gallium nitride if impationization and avalanche are at the origin of the major breakdown voltage? So this is the question, okay? Or there is a possible explanation why even if avalanche is the ultimate lateral breakdown mechanism coming into play, into, into play at some VDS, nonetheless, nonetheless, the slope of this curve can be, or there is an explanation why this slope is smaller than the, the critical, the critical electrical field for avalanche in gallium nitride. This was the question. And the answer suggested by simulation is, yes, there is a chance, according to simulation, that even if the slope is 0 0.9, 10 to the 6 volt over centimeters and, non, and not 4 times 10 to the 6 volt centimeters. That is the critical field. Okay? There is a chance that explanation can still be avalanche. And what is the reason? Actually, the reason is very simple. <laughs> the reason is non-uniformity of electrical field profile over the gate to drain access region. Okay? That slope should be exactly the critical field, the critical field for avalanche, if 
electrical field distribution would be rectangular. Would be rectangular. Okay, so uniform. Our simulation suggests that very simple thing, but many, many, many people without doing simulation know <laughs> uh, the electrical field is very non-uniform. This is the case without carbon doping. Without carbon doping, the electrical field has two peaks, one and here we have, we have, I mean, the electrical field profile at the algan gan interface, okay? And there are two electrical field peaks, one at the gate edge towards the drain, and the other one, I mean, under, in, in the channel, under the gate, the gate edge of the gate, sorry, the gate edge towards the drain, okay? Uh, and the other one is under the field plate, the field plate edge, the field plate edge, okay? Um, and here we have, I mean, sorry, a very small breakdown voltage. This case is wafer A case, completely independent from LGD. Without carbon doping, you cannot improve breakdown voltage by increasing LGD because the electric field remains also always in the same position at the gate. Okay. And of course, very, very, very small in the order of, of some tenths of volt, some tenths of volt. Breakdown voltage. Wafer C, carbon doped, there is a dependence of a breakdown voltage on LGD because thanks to carbon doping, increasing LGD leads to these effects. To these effects. I mean, the, the electric field is distributed over a larger region. So the electric field peak decreases because the area of electric field profile must remain the same for a given for a given VDS voltage, okay, and 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 these are simulations. These are profiles, electric field profile corresponding to simulation where impationization is triggered by electron injection. Okay, we have to remember that these are Schottky gate devices. Okay, and critical field is approached at the drain contact edge. Okay. If I still have five minutes, yes. Yes. Final case study. Ion induced breakdown. We go back to standard RF hands. So iron doped. The same shown before for, for um, barrier buffer discrimination, probably the first case study I described. Same devices. Experiments here are free, ter free terminal of state breakdown measurements under UDIN beam irradiation, okay? And under low flux, these ions of state breakdown is shown to take place at a VDS of about 100 volt against the 200 volt breakdown observed for these devices without I mean, in standard conditions without uh, ion irradiation. Is there an explanation for this? Is there a simple explanation for this? Not necessarily the real one, but a simple one provided by simulation? Yes, yes. There is an explanation for this, a possible explanation for this. 
we we carried out simulation uh, under heavy ion under heavy ion uh, irradiation by using a, a heavy ion model I mean uh, able to 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 take into account electron hole per generation as a result of ion ion um, releasing their energy uh, inside the semiconductor um, okay these are simulation have 100 volt okay and what we obtain in our simulation is a regular quite regular ID and IG waveforms related to charge deposition and collection. Okay. This is the time of ion arrival. You have a peak in both drain current and gate current and gate current. And basically electron hole spurs are generated. Electrons exit the device from the drain hole, exit the device from the gate. And you have a peak in both drain current and gate current. And then there is following the peak, there is a relaxation because holes, uh, yeah, uh, and electrons need to be to be collected. And this can happen in, in a finite time. They are deposited in very short time and then are collected in a, in a longer time. And, but simulations show that there is an amplification factor between the gate current and the drain current. Okay, so drain current is larger than the whole current. Why is this? It's simply electron current is due to electron collection and whole current is due to whole collection and electron holes are generated in the same number. Why? There, there is this amplification, okay? And the reason, the simple reason uh, provided, suggested by simulation is that there is a modulation of the gate to source potential barrier induced by whole generation, a bipolar effect, a bipolar effect. So, again, simulations, actually we don't have we, the breakdown waveform during experiments, okay? So, we only have simulations, and this is the device failure, the simulated device failure, okay? At some VDS larger than the critical voltage okay. and this is the ion induced breakdown the red curves while the blue curves are the same shown before they refer to the smaller vds so under the critical voltage okay the bipolar effect is not triggered above the critical voltage the bipolar effect is triggered and leads to device failure and simulation failure also. <laughs> so convergence stops to, to be obtained. Uh, okay. In final, the picture of a device when this kind of ion induced breakdown is triggered at this voltage. At ion arrival, this is the picture of a device, whole density. This is the hole going to the source. Going to the source. They are generated. Sorry, no, they are generated here. The drain is on the left. Sorry. Generated here and they go to the source. Okay, this is the electron density, the increased electron injection from
from this source as a result of a potential barrier decrease induced by the generated holes. And this is the breakdown, a very large impact ionization rate at breakdown. Okay. Uh, conclusions, performance and reliability limiters for RF and power gun hands have been analyzed by coupled experiments and device simulation. We were able to provide some insight, not necessarily the solution, some suggestions towards the solution for these case studies. Okay. Let me just conclude with an outlook. Yes, VGAN is the project uh, we are working within um, currently. It is dedicated to the development of vertical, vertical wideband gap power devices at silicon cost, at silicon cost. And we started doing some simulations uh, regarding fin fed vertical devices and also tren vertical trench devices. And our aim is again to combine the use of electrical characterization and TCAD modeling uh, in order to, to study possible reversible and permanent trapping mechanism and to provide some insight also uh, on these technologies. And that's it. Thank you, Giovanni. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Okay, thank you, thank you Giovanni. We okay. finish at noon time. You see the bell? Okay. Super good. Perfect. So any any question for Giovanni? Maybe we have uh, five minutes of a uh, few questions. I think uh, you have done a very nice connection between uh, the previous present presentation as well. So it's good. Thank you for a nice talk. Um, how do you simulate the buffer? For because typically a uh, sequence of uh, super lattice is used and aluminum nitride argon, so you have quantum wells and barriers and also interface traps. Uh, how do you account for this? Um, the, real the real answer is we do not account for this. <laughs> we just put equity, uh, except for the vertical breakdown. Okay were actually uh, taking into account the real fine structure under the buffer, okay, under the carbon dot buffer, so taking into account, uh, I mean, the uh, relief, strain relief uh, buffer, okay, and the nucleation layer and the substrate is important, okay. We did some simulation of, break, of vertical breakdown, I didn't show any result on this, in that case, we try to take into account the complete epi layer, including strain relief uh, region, not the super lattice, but a kind of algan equivalent layer with a, a aluminum indium, uh, sorry, a, a, an aluminum mole fraction, in, an average aluminum, aluminum uh, mole fraction and the nucleation layer and part of the substrate, okay? In that case, we had to, because we tried to simulate electron injection from the substrate into the nitride layers. For all the simulation I, 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 have, I, 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 I have shown today, basically, the region under the carbon dope buffer, the carbon dope buffer is completely uh, taking into account within the, uh, the framework of a dominant uh, acceptor model for carbon, but all the layers under the carbon dot buffer are basically assumed to be equivalently taken into account by an oxide layer, okay, or an aluminum nitride layer uh, corresponding to the nucleation layer and part of a substrate, part of a substrate, depending on the case. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Giovanni. Yes, another question. Um, so, 
taking into account the learning curve in the understanding of the different mechanisms in the lateral hem that you described now, how would you describe, um, and I mean also taking into account um, where understanding was created, how would you describe the ideal interplay between device fabrication, measurement strategies, and then simulation in order to, let's say, take most insight out, to, out of uh, least possible experiments. So what are the things that should be varied on um, fabrication level? What are the things that should be varied on uh, measurement level so that you can learn most? And then help again um, for um, device layouting or uh, something like this to, to improve simply the fabrication process. Okay. Okay. Um, Short answer. Yeah. <laughs> Very difficult. Very difficult question to answer. What I can say is that the most fruitful results in our experience was obtained when experiments, simulations were done, of course, with a strong link between the experimental group and the simulation group in a continuous, I mean, feedback collaboration, but also with collaboration with the company who fabricated the device. Not all the cases I've shown correspond to this triangle. Uh, triangle. Tri <laughs> okay. In some case, um, in some case, um, we were not able to, to, to obtain a complete feedback with, with the company. In that case, results are only based on our, our I mean, understanding, are only based on experiment and simulation without the feedback on the, on the suitability of the proposed models to, to explain uh, the, the observed phenomena validated in some way from people who fabricate and know very, very well the devices. So the best the best situation is when there is a triangle. triangle. Yes, I, I can confirm that uh, the best result we have in this case, when uh, the, the, the company provides us uh, as many information as possible on the technology, then we know where to look for the, the variation and so on, and then, uh, then you get really the maximum. And we get really excellent result when this triangle was established. In all the other cases, we just give uh, qualitative stuff, and we never give any very important information. Okay. Uh, very quick question because we are also to run and I have an important announcement to give uh, to the presenter this afternoon. Okay, thanks Giovanni for your very meaningful talk on the application of TCAD as a tool to try to understand non-trivial effects. It's more a technicality. Uh, you mentioned the, the, the importance of uh, uh, hole trapping by electron traps. How you define the uh, behavior of... Sorry, the opposite. Electron trapping... Electron trapping into hole traps. Hole traps. Anyhow, uh, how do you define the, the uh, behavior of a trap within the TCAD? Because you have to define the type of the trap as an acceptor or donor, and or you play with the capture cross-sections. Okay, good, good question. Actually, I completely skip this. Uh, what I, I intend for a whole trap is simple, very simple, uh, with standard cross-sections, Okay, uh, obtained from literature for carbon defects, for the, basically for the carbon-related sectors, CN traps, okay? You can find values for the capture cross-sections for electron and holes. Values are quite standard. We are not able to change the hole or electron trap nature of the level that is completely controlled by the trap energy. So what I intend for a whole trap is a trap that has an, an, a, 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 an energy level closer to the valence band than to the conduction band. So it can only exchange under standard conditions, thermal conditions, okay? Near equilibrium conditions can only exchange charge with a valence band. This is in a whole trap. So 0.7 to 
9 EV from uh, the, the valence band for the CN trap means that the CN level is in a whole trap according to this definition because this level is a 0.7 or 0.9 EV from the valence band and correspondingly 2.5 EV from the conduction band. Okay, so if you calculate the electron emission to the conduction band, okay, it's a number. <laughs> I suggest you to calculate. Okay. I'm not going the result. <laughs> okay, so thank you, Giovanni, again. Eventually, Giovanni is here even after this for other discussion. Thank you, Giovanni. Thank you.